And once again, good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. We're going to talk about these continuation patterns. Now, continuation patterns are sometimes termed as candlestick patterns. You can have continuation candlestick patterns. But I'm going to spend a little bit more time on the continuation chart patterns tonight. Patterns that um, some of you may know, but haven't really taken the time to really digest um, the price action uh, within a chart okay so if we take a look at at some charts like um, well let's I'm gonna use Apple um, we're uh, right way options is in this trade on Apple and if you take a look at that um, chart this was our last entry into the trade now I consider a pop out of the box a continuation pattern and why is that a continuation pattern anyone anyone have an answer for that why would that be considered a continuation pattern the reason it um, in in my opinion it's a continuation pattern well little selling below yes Malcolm it continues the uptrend that's right. All it is is an uptrend continuation. And by the way, excuse me for just a second. I wanted to get a just a black screen here so I could do a little drawing on it. <clears throat> In just a little bit. So we're going to take a look at first that pop out of the box pattern now the pop out of the box pattern is is really pretty simple okay <clears throat> there's actually a candlestick pattern out there you've probably heard of it the mat hold pattern the mat hold pattern is a three candle continuation pattern but what i'm talking about here is this pop out of the box and the first key element to the pop out of the box is we need to have a trend. I don't care if it's an uptrend or a downtrend, we need to have a trend. Now I'm always going to prefer that um, you trade with the direction of the overall market. So if we have a trend in a stock and we're moving up like this in a stock, we want to always be cognizant of where that trend is. I don't know why this works. I honestly don't. It makes no sense to me other than a lot of people watching this same trend. Okay. But stocks tend to move back to their trend. They either move there in what we call a peak and valley pattern, you know, where we pull back and then move higher, or they tend to move there in these sideways patterns. And that's what I call the pop out of the box. The pop out of the box pattern is a pattern that is a very tight consolidation. And I typically describe it as a consolidation where the price action is usually less than about 3% of the, the price of the stock between the high and the low of that range. So if we're, if we're looking at candles here and we get these really tight consolidating candles in here where we bounce around in here a little bit we move up and down and we get at least four days of price action in here where the stock really just seems to want to hang out in this nice tight area okay the pop out of the box pattern will always be bordered by an area here that is well defined there's no sellers below this area okay and there's no buyers above this area all right we're in that consolidation pattern now if that were to occur a long ways away let's say the stock popped up really hard and fast and that four-day pattern occurred right here is that going to be nearly as strong as the pattern when it occurred right here and moved right over to the trend? The answer to that is no. When we move that far away from our trend in a real quick move, the chances, the odds 
of a longer term consolidation or a protracted pullback are high. So we want to look for those very controlled consolidation per periods. We want that volatility of the stock to be dropping. You'll notice in a lot of these patterns, they may have little tiny wicks and tails, but we rarely have those big, long wicks and tails in here in that pop out of the box pattern. <clears throat> now, because we're in an uptrend, we're going to be watching and waiting for that trade to finally find its legs in here. We don't know how long it'll take. Hopefully it's moving over toward the trend and then we wait for those buyers to step in and pop that out of the box. An entry signal in here is that trade that pops the top of that box. Now the closer it is to the trend, the higher the probability of a winning trade. I don't know why that's true, but it is. If you move over toward that trend, and find that the buyers step in there, we have better chance of the stock moving on up. Now this pattern gets even stronger if we join that with a price support right in here. If the consolidation occurs right through this range right here, it moves over toward the trend, and we have a combination of a price support and the trend makes that even stronger of a pattern. Okay? So we want to pay attention to that. We want to always look at that pattern very, very closely. So let's go back here just a second and let's take a look at um, the pattern here and by the way, if you guys have questions, make sure you bring them up. Um, yeah, pop out of the box is a tight consolidation. Um, but that tight consolidation is um, in a very small range. Okay. So we're popping out, and the reason the reason I came up with the term pop out of the box is because I would commonly, when I found that pattern, I would draw lines around it, okay? I would look for those patterns, I would draw lines around it, I would usually place a price alert right here, that's what this alert was on Apple, place that price alert, and I was usually looking for that price support right in here. And that created my box. Okay, so I have this little box in here where the price was pinned in, volatility was dropping in the stock. It was a very calm period, and all I have to do is wait. Be patient. Now I do that by setting a an alert right here. I place an alert on the chart and I literally make the trade come to me. I don't watch this every single day. I'm not hurry in any hurry to enter that trade. I wait. The closer and closer it gets to the trend, the higher probability we move like that. Okay, so pop out of the box pattern. I have a full class on the pop out of the box pattern if you want more information about it, but pop out of the box is really one of those very simple patterns that everyone can see and read. First off, number one thing, how do we find the pop out of the box pattern? I'm going to repeat this one more time. First thing, stock must be in a trend. How do we know we're in a trend? We know when we're a trend when the stock makes a higher low and proves. Buyers step in proving that's a trend. Okay? And as long as we're in that trend, these patterns continue to show themselves and produce over and over and over. There are stocks out there that I, I call um, steppers. Take a look at um, Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble kind of failed today on an earnings report. You can see right here, this is kind of that stepper pattern where we move up through resistance, 
consolidate, move up, consolidate, move up, consolidate. And you can see those little pop out of the box patterns occurring right in here. As they move over toward that trend, we want to be watching for that break. They break through, move over, moving over toward that trend. We want to look for that pattern to find our way into that position. <clears throat> okay, the next continuation pattern. Um, do I receive, uh, do I wait for additional confirmation? Rarely do I, Barry. And the reason is, um, if I've done the technical analysis, okay, on the chart itself, remember, I'm only going to be looking for stocks when I think the market is strong enough to support trends, uptrends. If I think the market's funky, I don't care what signal I get, I'm probably not going to take it. Okay. Yeah, the pop out of um, the pop out of the box uh, for the LTA scanner finds them all the time. Um, it found Visa today. There's the pop out of the box right there. Here's another stepper. Step, step. Easy train to make. Okay. Now, the only reason I'm not in Visa, it reports earnings tomorrow. Well, Al, I, th I th um, if you've been um, listening to uh, my morning prep videos, that's where I make my determination whether or not the market is sustaining an uptrend, holding price support, continuing to show buying pressure. It's all about the preparation for the day. I do that evaluation of all the indexes. Okay? And I'm always looking for reasons for the market. If the market starts to show failure, starts to show whatever, I may avoid some of those pop out of the box patterns. I, I may avoid all trades if I'm worried of a failure at a resistance in the overall market. You know, when you do take a look at the diamonds, take a, just take a look at the diamonds. Does the diamonds look like a sustainable trend, a trend that's strong? Is there any reason to believe that this can't continue? Is there anything in the price action that tells us failure yet? No. So I have to stay with the trend. I need to stay with that trend long. If we take a look at the SPY, what do you see in the SPY? Is there anything in that chart that gives you pause, that makes you think, hey, we're going to fail here? No. So I'm doing my evaluation of the overall condition of the market, and then I base my trading around that. I'm going to pull back or restrict my trading. If I don't feel confident in the overall market, I'm going to restrict my trading. I'm not going to trade very much. I'm going to be careful. I'm going to be cautious. I'm going to prevent risk. But if I'm confident in the overall market and a pattern like Apple shows up, I'm going to take that trade. And right way options is up in this trade over 25%. Okay, very, very simple trade to take. Okay, trade to make. So let's talk about another chart pattern, a chart pattern that's really, really common in trades, and that is that pullback. I'm going to go to another past trade, um, and I'm going to go to NVIDIA. This is a trade that Rightway Options took. And we made a bucket load of money on this trade. Now, we've already talked about how we make those consolidations over the trend, but what about the pullbacks to the trend? Let's take a look at what happened here in NVIDIA. NVIDIA moved higher, okay? Broke through a major price resistance point 
found its way back to the trend. Actually, this is where the trend really got identified. Right way options, myself, we took this trade. Okay, as you can see, a very nice move in that chart. Now these can move kind of, they can be a little bit different on how they move, but let's describe both of those, okay? Let's take a little time. I wanna dissect this stuff a little bit for you guys so that you can kind of begin to see this um, happening. And by the way, guys, the way I learned to do this, how many in here still use really colorful charts, all kinds of indicators, all kinds of things like that on their charts, really complicated um, set of indicators, uh, multicolored, all kinds of fancy. Let me give you a clue, guys. If anyone's here that's still using that, I highly, highly, highly recommend a white background chart with black candles. Okay, because our eyes are designed to see black and white more than any other patterns. We can see black and white. Yeah, and I call this a naked chart. <laughs> it is rather freeing, isn't it, Gwen? <laughs> Just very, very simple charts. You can see these patterns and you'll begin to, attempt to identify things like this. But one of the re reasons I was able to, or I have studied price action so much, is I would actually take a chart like this and I would pull it back. Take a chart that you have, you've missed the trade on, and then go step forward one day at a time and ask yourself, what did I do? How did I miss this trade? What, what, what am I looking for? And I would move that chart one day at a time forward looking for the good price pattern. The place where I could comfortably get in that trade and take advantage of the trend, okay? And I would do this, I would spend hours doing this, studying these price patterns like this, following along with a chart, okay? So if you want to work on practicing that yourself, it's kind of a boring process, but it's really important to study that price action. Okay, so let's talk about what we call a pullback opportunity, okay? Now, the pullback opportunity is really nothing more. How many of you know the pattern that everyone calls the um, um, bullish flag? If we look at a trend, stock has been moving up and we're in, in a peak and valley pattern. This pullback here toward the trend is called a bullish flag. Okay, and what we're looking for, and here's where I used to make a mistake on this all the time, guys. I mean, I made so many mistakes on this, it was just ridiculous. It took me forever to reform myself from this. I would see this bullish flag, I knew the pattern, oh, bullish flag, this is great. I would try to anticipate the entry. Anybody, anybody ever done that, tried to predict where the entry is? and jump into a trade thinking, oh, hey, it's got to go up from here, right? Only to have it go on down. Don't predict the entry. Wait, be patient, wait for the buyers to show themselves here that they're going to pick it up in this area. Okay, now here is a big problem that a lot of people deal with. And I talk about this every once in a while during the live class every day that we do in, in, in um, Right Way Options. <clears throat> How many of you look at this chart right here and say, well, I can't trade that because this is price resistance? I can't trade that. 
Well, let, let me go through a process here that, that may help you with this uh, on these pullbacks like this. First off, you have to start planning your trades. Guys, if you're not planning your trades, if you're not treating your trading as a business, all right, you're gonna always be emotional about your trading. No doubt about it, you're gonna be emotional about your trading. So let's think about this. This is what I would do, and you tell me how this can even make sense when you talk it through. See, if I enter this trade here, if I get into this position, I enter here, my stop loss can be very close. I take very small risk in this trade. Okay? I know I have a trend. I know I have price reacting to the trend. And hopefully some price support in here as well. So I have a low risk entry, but here's the thing I did all the time. Because I was always so concerned about this, what I would do is I would wait. I would wait for so much confirmation that the stock was going up, I would jump into this trade here, just before the stock pulled back, again, stopping me out. I never would have put, I, I never even thought about it because I wasn't planning trades. I wasn't do, following a good discipline in my trade. When I would enter this position, if I had figured this out before, if I enter this here, my stop loss still needs to be down here. That's where the price support is. And all I've done is taken a bigger risk by entering up here. Okay, so I choose, I make the choice to buy the lower risk entry. Well, trend definition should not vary by individual, Happy. How does an uptrend begin? If a stock falls and does this, is this beginning an uptrend? No, it's not beginning an uptrend. How do we know when we have an uptrend? If I draw lines on a chart, everyone can identify the uptrend. Okay. So if they're trying to define the trend or define an uptrend in a whole bunch of different ways, they're wrong. They're, it's simple. This is right, if this is the bottom down in here, here, let me just redraw this. Stock has been moving down, blows off the bottom, rallies up, this right here, is where the trend begins. And not until then. It doesn't begin over here. There's no trend here. This is all speculation. This is bottom pickers. And to be honest, what this is is institutions. Institutions are the one that decides when a market, when a stock is going to turn around. It's not traders, not you and I. They make that decision. They start supporting these trades. Okay? So our trend begins right here when that buy signal gets that higher low. Now that doesn't mean you have to take the trade there, right? Because here's the other thing, we always beat ourselves up as traders because we didn't catch the, the very first. We'll see this and go, oh crap, I missed it. Right? And beat yourself up. Look at there, see? I'm just an idiot, I missed it again. I can't do anything right. I miss these all the time, guys. You cannot catch them all. It's impossible. Stop trying. 
If you miss that trade, put this chart in a list, mark it up, and wait for the next entry into the trade. Because what, what's the truth about a trend? A very common truth of the trend is the trend stays a trend until the trend breaks. We don't know when the trend is going to break. We don't know what it'll look like when the trend breaks. So just trade the trend. Don't try to add in all of your rules and all of this other junk or what somebody said on TV about it. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Okay? I had someone today um, make a comment, and, and maybe they're here, and that's fine. This isn't to beat them up in any way, shape, or form, but they were saying they would never trade GIS because the fundamentals aren't good. Okay, so the fundamentals aren't good. Has that stopped this chart from moving higher? No. Follow the price action of the chart. Just follow the price action of the chart. That's all you got to do. If the price is telling you buyers are stepping in, follow it. You know, I it, it hit me years and years ago, and this took me a long, long time to figure out. But I finally realized one day that there is no easier way to make money in the market than to just find a stock that's trending and then wait for the next entry. I don't have to be the hero. I don't have to pick the bottom. I don't have to pick the perfect entry. I just have to wait for the next entry in the trend. And follow that trade up. Okay? Or follow that trade down. So, I don't, you know, um, we put so many rules on ourselves and we beat ourselves up. Yeah, stop the beating. We beat ourselves up so many times. Okay? So many times we beat ourselves up. The things are just terrible. We can't, we can't figure this out. It's all on me. It's all these different things. When the truth of the matter is a lot of times you're making some good decisions, but you don't allow yourself to win on those trades. How many times have you guys been in a winning trade, moved up, you closed it too soon, and then the only thing you can do after that is beat yourself up because the stock just kept going up. Man, I suck at this. I'm a terrible trader. And beat yourself up. Okay? If you closed the trade for a gain... Isn't that your job? Now you could Im maybe improve on that trade and you could work to improve that on, on your position, but what you've missed out is you bought the trade, sold it at a higher price, and you made a profit. But we don't focus on that, right? We focus, we go back and we look again and go, oh man, look at that thing go. I'm such a crummy trader. Stop doing that to yourself. Just take a trending chart and follow it. Follow it up as long as it's going to go or follow it down as long as it's going to go. If you like to trade short, it's the same pattern. Okay, so let's go back here. I want to go back and talk about that PBO. We call it a PBO, pullback opportunity, but it's really nothing more than what we call, that's called a bull flag. 
the bull flag is kind of a, and bear flags are kind of funny because they require a pretty substantial move up in the stock and then you get this pullback. Now pullbacks don't happen the same way all the time, right? If they did, it would be easy. Pullbacks can be messy, they can be um, all kinds of weird stuff. We can get really big candles, you know, say for example, the stock has moved up and then all of a sudden we get this really big bearish candle here. We get another day that looks like this. And then all of a sudden we just get these little teeny tiny candles here. Well, what does that tell us about this price action? We had a, what it tells us if we look at it, look at the candles. Here's the problem that I see most traders are facing is we only look at this candle. We don't look at this. Okay. We don't look at the big picture. We don't look at the pattern itself. We don't say, well, geez, all of the momentum that we had for selling here dried up. If the trend happens to be right in here, I'm going to be placing a price alert right across this area right here, waiting for that buy signal to come in. Okay. Pullback opportunities, we have to study the price action and how that pulled back, what that chart looks like. You know, if I were to draw this with a different, let me put a different color here on these arrows. What if we drew this like this? That's a price wedge. Okay. A price wedge. A price wedge is a continuation pattern. And if we can identify how that pattern come together, we can find those better entry signals into these trades. Okay? All we're doing is studying the full chart, not just the candle that's being produced today. What is the chart telling us about direction? Okay. You know, Eric, you must repeat to yourself, it can't go any lower. <laughs> um, I, a lot of people trade like that. And, and you know what causes that? Because they don't plan their trades. When I put on a trade, I know my entry, I know my exit, and I know how much I'm risking on the trade before I enter the position. If this risk is too high, I walk away from the trade. I don't care how pretty the pattern is. I don't care. I don't care if everybody that I'm around is trading it. I don't trade it if it doesn't fit me personally. Now here's the other thing. If the trade goes against me and there's no guarantee ever on a trade, right, that it's gonna work. We just look for high probability trades. High probability trades doesn't say that they are a no risk probability. Some of these trades are gonna lose. So I choose to take the low risk entry into this trade because when I get stopped out, and I get stopped out just like everybody else, I don't take too much risk on those positions. Okay? I know the risk before I enter the trade. There's no free lunch, and those, there's no perfect trade. There's no perfect trade pattern. There's no perfect entry into the trade. All we have to do is try to pick those trades out that have a high probability of winning. Would you guys agree this pattern right here 
is the one of the most repeatable patterns in the market ever. Stock moves up, it pulls back. Stock moves up, it pulls back. Stock moves up, it consolidates. Stock moves up, it pulls back. It repeats itself over and over and over every day in the market. So what we have to do is work really hard to identify those entries that occur at high probability points with low risk in the trade. Okay? Not every trade is going to work. They don't have to. Okay? But if we work really hard at studying that price action in these continuation patterns, we can find these really great trades to move us along in a pattern, okay? So we look for that entry point. Runway Options folks will confirm that I love to look for these pullbacks that have a lot of momentum at the first part, the first couple of days of that pullback, and then light volume price action for two or three days, little spinning top dojis, little resting period moving over to the trend. You'll see a lot of my alerts placed right in that area. I'm waiting for that next signal when those buyers might step in to support that price. Um, Oleg, uh, um, again, it comes down to your confidence in the overall direction of the market. You can certainly wait for the next day, right? You could wait for the next day. But what if the next day the stock gaps? You're, you're not going to get the trade. Right? So if I'm confident in the direction of the market, the trend of the market, the strength of the market, everything is looking positive and bullish, we're moving up, there's no reason for major concern, then I have to go with the low risk entry trade. Doesn't mean they're all gonna work. Because if I wait for more confirmation, I may just miss the trade altogether. Let me give you a great example of that. One that I didn't get. Okay? Microsoft. Everyone will confirm that. I've been talking about Microsoft for quite a while, saying, hey, everybody, we should keep an eye on Microsoft. Microsoft has a tendency to rally toward earnings. I waited too long. I didn't get in the trade. Look what's happened as we've moved toward earnings. Okay. So I missed the position. Well, Malcolm, here's the thing with me. If I miss the trade, I just missed the trade. Okay, I don't chase a trade. I don't ever want to chase a trade. I've been punished too many times for chasing a trade. If I miss the trade, I just maintain my discipline. Hey, you missed it. Wait for the next entry into the trade. Okay, now I know a lot of the right way option members made money on this. I happen to miss it. It happens to all of us. But I'm not going to beat myself up over that because I've made a bunch of money on Microsoft before and I'll make a bunch of money on Microsoft again. I just have to wait for the next entry. That's all. I just have to wait for the next entry into the trade. 
So there's no need for me to chase this. And there's no need for me to beat myself up about it. Because when I'm wasting time doing that, I'm not looking for other trades setting up today. Okay. Probably the better, the one of the best entries was right here, Oleg. Right about there. Of the latest entries. Could have tr probably caught that one right there as well. Well, some of us did catch Qualcomm, Walt. Rightway Options made really good money on Qualcomm. And we did it after the stock broke its downtrend, rallied above resistance, and held support, and buyers stepped in, confirming the trend. That's where we entered into the position. Okay. I took money off of this trade, sold the original trade, picked up some additional on the trade, and I happened to be holding it when this occurred. That's pure luck. Every once in a while, you get the opportunity to hit that home run. Okay? But that's luck. That's not skill. Nobody predicted that. Nobody could predict that. Okay? What's important is did you catch the good trade, the easy trade, the simple trade? We don't have to be a hero. We just have to be consistent with that same pattern. By the way, guys, you guys see, notice this is exactly the same patterns that I talk about. Move up, consolidate over. Wash, rinse, and repeat. The same patterns over and over and over. Okay? Let's talk about some patterns that can really hurt you, though in a trade let's see someone had brought up a stock today and now all of a sudden I'm having a senior moment and can't remember was rallying back to its highs oh now I can't think of what it is um, um, we'll look as we go along here, see if I can't find something. Um, take a look at Tiffany's. Anybody see the same pattern I've been talking about? Glue. I think it was glue. Thank you, Stu. We'll look at that. Anybody see the same pattern? A stock that continues to respect its trend and it moves off of the trend. It's respecting price support and resistance in the chart. And all we have to do is watch and identify and wait for that trade. I alerted people to this trade today. Tiffany's. You know, the fun thing about this is we can find these patterns before they occur and make the trade come to us. We don't have to chase them. Anybody in here feel like you're just constantly in the mode of chasing, chasing, chasing? Hurry, 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 hurry. I can't catch up. I can't move fast enough. Okay? Always chasing. We'll get off of that treadmill. Start finding these trending charts, marking them up, placing alerts, and waiting for the trades. The trades will come to you. You don't have to race to them. They will come to you if you identify them. I've been waiting on this trade for a while. No big trick, except patience. Okay? 
Let's take a look at that glue. I think it was glue. Yes, it was glue. Somebody asked me today about glue. Was glue a buy? Now this is a chart where, didn't I just tell you about this pullback, this, this bull flag right here, that that was a good signal? Yeah, I did, right? Just told you that the bull flag was a good signal. What's wrong with this chart though? Is this chart in a technically correct pattern? And when I say technically correct pattern, good stocks that are trending don't break support. They hold support. They don't break support. What happened in glue? It not only broke this support, but broke this support. Okay? So if we break support, isn't that the first the first stage of a possible downtrend. Here's the thing that used to catch me all the time. I did this so many times, guys. I, I hate to admit how many, how much money I lost doing this because I would look at this chart right here and I would fail to recognize that I had broken trend and all we had done is rallied back to resistance. Kimberly's right. This was a bull flag right here, right? This is a bear flag right here. Okay. What Kimberly has identified is that this is price resistance. We've rallied back up. Isn't this how a failure occurs? Not that, that, not that glue is going to be a failure. It may not be a failure. But this isn't, isn't this how a failure occurs? We rally back to resistance. And then we get that bearish move back down. That's how downtrends are built. And I made this mistake over and over and over. I would buy right here and I would swear that somebody must be watching me trade because every time I entered that position, I got punished. What's wrong? How could this happen over and over and over again? And what I was failing to recognize is that I was buying stocks at price resistance. That's where the rule came in. One of the rules that I live by, it's a golden rule for me. If a trade is not meeting this rule, I never, ever trade the trade. I only buy stocks that are at or near price support. Is there anything about this chart right now that's at or near price support? No. So I can't trade it. I won't trade it. I refuse to trade it. Okay? I won't trade this until this trade shows me something better. Okay? See how that worked right here? Pull back. Rally up. Try to chase that trade right in here. Bang. Get stopped out. Where was the trade right here? The trade was right here after it did pull back and held a higher low that's where the buyers came in so couldn't that happen here as well couldn't this hit this resistance just like it did over there pull back make a higher low and then be a buy signal yeah 
Let's get into a technically correct pattern. Let's get into a positive uptrend. What if the chart just consolidates sideways? What if it comes up here, hits this resistance, and just goes sideways right here in a nice tight pattern? Isn't that just what I showed you in TIFF? Stock moves up. and then just consolidates itself over to the trend. Okay, so if that's good for this, why wouldn't that work for, for glue? If the stock were to run up into this resistance area, just a second, run up into this resistance area, consolidate in a nice tight pattern and then pop out, why would that be different here? Because the price action would tell us in that pop out of the box pattern, if we have that really tight box right here, that there's no sellers below this level. The stock is still in a trend and it's moved closer to its trend the odds are starting to favor the bulls pushing that through. Does that make sense, guys? So be pickier about the trades you take. Ask yourself on every trade, am I in a technically correct pattern? Am I buying this stock right at price resistance? Because aren't those the most painful trades you've ever taken in your life? You buy them right there at price resistance. We see these patterns all the time, right? These patterns where we get this nice little move up here, we consolidate over, oh my gosh, there's a buy signal right there. We hop on that trade. We don't pay attention to the current trend that we're a long ways away from the trend. And then we get stopped at. right? Because we can't stand it. We just want to find a trade so bad. Give me a trade. I need a trade. Hurry up. Give me a trade. That we chase in the positions. We don't evaluate what the price action is telling us. Yeah, and then it takes off, right? You're exactly right. Isn't that even worse? You jump into this trade, right up in here, jump into this trade. Oh my gosh, this is going up, I gotta hurry. I'm gonna, that fear of missing, I'm gonna miss out on this position. Stock pulls back, you get stopped out. The next day it starts up. All that happened there is we failed on following our rule. We bought at price resistance, not at price support. Right? Write that rule down, guys. We buy stocks at or near price support. Okay? That will save you a ton. So, we've talked about a pop out of the box pattern as a continuation. We've talked about the PBO pullback opportunity or that peak and valley type pattern following that trend. We talked about uh, bull flags and bear flags in that trade and how can we identify them we identify them with just a little with a few drawings it does, it's not that hard to identify a trend okay most people when you look at a chart you don't even need an indicator when you look at a chart you can see is the stock by and large moving up or is it by and large going down Okay. If we find those charts that are trending, then all we have to do is wait for the next entry into the trade. Okay. Now I mentioned NVIDIA before. We had a great trade in NVIDIA. Do you guys see what's going on in NVIDIA right now? Let me pull this back just a little bit further. 
you can see I've made a possible uptrend right here, and that's the, because of this right here. Buyer stepping in and it followed through. Take a look at the price resistance right here, though. We have price resistance in the chart that carries all the way back over to here. So we have to think about that price resistance in our chart. We also have to think about this trend. This was the original trend. Is it entirely possible that NVIDIA, after making such a big move up, spends a longer time just kind of winding around, consolidating, moving back to this original trend? It's entirely possible, right? So where do you enter this trade? Well, some people would look at this trade and say, hey, I could enter it right here. There's my stop loss. I could enter this trade here, low risk trade. I look at this trade a little bit differently. I think the entry was right there. But I see that if I enter this trade here, I'm going to have resistance right here. I may be risking as much as I could potentially gain on that trade. And that's not because of this peak right here. It's because of all of this price action all the way back here showing me that resistance. It's not that peak. It's the overall of the chart showing me that resistance. So if I choose not to tra take this trade, what would be the problem right here if I just let that break out? I don't have to hurry and I don't have to rush, right? If that breaks out, then pulls back and holds, proves it can hold that as support and shows buyers stepping up, I have a great trade set up here then. I don't have to chase it. I don't have to rush. I wait for the trade I want in the trade. Some trades take off and they just leave you behind and you just have to pass on by. They weren't your trade. I'm not interested in trading every single stock. I'm not interested in trading every single pattern. I'm interested in being very disciplined and consistent in my winning trades. Okay. It's possible they could be waiting on earnings on this Robert, but I think more likely this just moved up too far too fast. It needed to rest. Okay, it needed to rest. And so we let it rest. We wait for the entry into the trade. I think is a very good chance it could rally toward earnings. That happens pretty commonly with stocks like this. They finally catch a place, buyers start picking it up, and it will rally on up in anticipation of earnings. I will take those trades ahead of earnings and then close them before the earnings report. Like this trade in Apple. I'm in this trade on Apple. I know it's going to report on 430. I can tell you 100%, I will not be in this trade on 430. I will take my profit and walk away from that trade. I won't try to speculate around the earnings report. I got my money out of it already. Now I let the earnings occur. I wait for the next entry into the trade. Is this helping, guys? Is this making some sense for you guys? I hope it is because this is the kind of thing that really can change your life as, as a trader. is really studying that price action, really looking into those trades and solidifying the rules that you need to trade by. People will ask me, do you trade such and such, you know, with flip out, you know, this indicator flips over this indicator? Nope, I don't. Well, why don't you? This guy says it's the greatest thing in the world. I don't care. I trade my trades. Those are the only ones I'm worried about. I'm not worried about anybody else's trades. I don't care what Jim Cramer thinks about a stock. I don't care what they say about the fundamentals of the stock. If the chart is showing me good price action and the buyers are buying it, I want to be there.
Well, see that price resistance up there, Malcolm? I buy stocks at price support. I sell stocks at or near price resistance. I sell stocks at or near price resistance. We had a really good day in the market. We're very, very close to new breakout highs on the SPY, new, new all-time highs. Another round of earnings tomorrow. I rolled the dice on this and thought probably a chance we could gap up tomorrow in the market. If we gap up tomorrow in the market, guess what happens? <laughs> if Apple gaps up, I can tell you. I won't even second guess it. I won't even watch it. If Apple gaps up tomorrow, I close the trade. I don't watch it wiggle around. I don't try to maximize it. I don't try to do anything fancy. If it, Apple gaps up tomorrow, I close the trade. I take the profit to the bank. Say thank you very much, Mr. Market. And now I look for the next trade. So tomorrow, if this moves higher, very good chance I'll be closing Apple. Isn't that the truth, Dan? <laughs> it just makes things easier, right? So much easier. Just following the trend. We don't have to try to predict anything. We don't have to be heroes. I did sell the 205, yes. I did sell the 205. If I get called away on this trade, that's just as good, right? Somebody paid me to buy it higher. I'm okay with that too. Call me away. Pullback PBO, pullback opportunity. Here's that pattern right here on Apple that I talked about. Stock moves up pretty substantially and then we get that heavy selling in here for two or three days. But notice how all of a sudden that selling just died on the vine right here. All the momentum to sell just disappeared. It was all over. Profit takers were done. You can see where I placed my price alert on Apple. pullback opportunity there's the trend I buy stocks at or near price support does that make sense just follow the trade follow the plan follow the patterns the patterns repeat themselves over and over in the market if you see a chart that has very, very wild price action. It's whipping all over the place. Or it's a stock that's in the news almost every day. What should you do with that stock? Probably just ignore it. I've never seen a more manipulated stock than Tesla. It's ridiculous. It's in the news all the time. You never know what's going to happen with Tesla. Sloppy and choppy, Dan, is a very good way to explain that. Sloppy, choppy, big candles, no consistency to the price action. Gap ups, gap downs. I don't even worry about those stocks. I don't care. I will take the old boring stocks every single day over stocks that are in the news. The Colgate Palm Olives. The Kimberly Clarks. I'll take those trades every single day. 
over those newsy stocks that are always in the news. I want the easy trade, the simple trade. I don't care if they're bouncing and whipping and all that kind of stuff. I'm not interested. I want a pattern that I can see, I can identify, I can read, and I can trade. Okay, it's really that simple. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about buy signals. <clears throat> I get this question a lot. It's one of those that is, I, I really struggle with answering. Okay. Because a buy signal is different to everyone. A buy signal is different between what you see as a buy signal, what I see as a buy signal. Because we have different tolerance to risk. Okay, if a stock has been moving up in a trend, okay, moving up nicely, doing what we want it to do in a trade, price action seems pretty darn consistent, looking good. Stock does a pullback and then it does this. Is that a buy signal to you? It's not to me. Certainly there was a big buying surge based on something, but it's not a buy signal to me. Remember, I want consistency in price action. So we all know what a bullish candle looks like, right? If a stock has been going sideways and consolidating in a nice tight range, okay, we get these little teeny tiny candles, they continue to shrink, we get this nice little move in here. Is that a buy signal to you? Well, here's the question. What if the trend is over here and this has moved up like this? Is that a buy signal to you? Hmm. Maybe yes, maybe no. See, we all know stocks can change their trend trajectories, but is that a buy signal to you? What's the condition of the overall market? If the overall market's looking bearish and stinky and, and you know nothing seems to be working right, is that a buy signal to you? Yeah, wouldn't be to me. What if the trend was nice and tight? The trend came in here, it was nice and tight to this. We had this nice little move up and then we consolidate. Condition of the market is good. Is that a buy signal? For me, every single day and all day long in that situation. See, the candlestick is an important part of it, but it's not the only part of the buy signal. What pattern is it in? Is it reacting to support? Is it reacting to resistance? Is it reacting to trend? What's the condition of the market? All of those factors come together to make that a buy signal or a just a pass. Okay, we all know what a bullish engulfing candle looks like. We know what a piercing candle looks like. We know what a, a hammer pattern, pattern, you know, candle looks like. All those things people think call buy signals. We know what a morning star pattern looks like. That's a buy signal, as long as it's placed in the right place. I get this question every once in a while. Stock is trending up. Stock just takes off here all of a sudden, leaps up, goes up here, gets a pullback like this, puts in a little tiny candle here, maybe has a hammer on it, hammer 
I'll see if I can make that with my little picture here. Kind of a little hammer pattern, and then we get this signal right here. Trend is clear over here, mind you. I tell people the morning star is one of my favorite patterns. And so people assume I see a morning pattern, I'm going to trade it. Does that make sense to trade that pattern? It's a buy signal. Right? Morning star is a buy signal. Okay? But the buy signal isn't where it needs to be, right? Where it's placed within a chart pattern is important. <laughs> you and me both, Dan. You and me both. I will not chase those trades. I need the price reacting to price support, price trend, something in that chart that gives me that higher probability. This right here gives me a very high probability of this. Gap up and move lower. Too high a probability. I won't take that trade. So a buy signal has to be within the context of the overall pattern of the trade. Where is this signal occurring? Is it occurring in a good logical place where we would expect a signal like that to occur? If the signal occurs and it's a great big move, it may be a beautiful chart. Take a look at J&J &J today. Is that a buy signal? Hmm. Well, what do we got going on here? We have a chart testing price resistance, but we have a chart that's made a higher low. Is that a buy signal? The overall market is strong. Why couldn't this be a, mo a stock that moves up? It absolutely could, right? So it comes down to this right now. If I buy this here, where does my stop loss need to be? If I'm following the price action of the chart, my stop loss has to be down here, right? Where price support is. Is that too much risk for the trade? I may have a buy signal, but is that a buy signal I'll trade? Okay. Is it entirely possible, instead of chasing that entry signal right there, could it be that J&J &J just kind of slides sideways over here for the next week or so and then provides that nice tight entry to pop out? Yeah, that's a possibility, right? So I don't have to chase that entry if I don't like the entry. So that wouldn't be a buy signal. B. What if what if the stock breaks out and then pulls back to trend? Shows me buyer stepping in. I can just wait for that train to occur and take the chart up here. Instead of taking the risk on chasing this right here into resistance, I get to buy it here at support and trend by just being patient. What did I miss in the trade? Almost nothing. By just being patient and waiting for the trade. Take a look at this here. Same price pattern happened right here. Move up, pull back, pop. Buyers come in. Do you enter this trade here, or do you simply wait for this trade right here? 
when we come back, pop through, test support, buyer step in. How much of that trade did you really miss on that trade? And is the odds of this trade a win of winning higher than this one? I would say yes. Pick the higher odd trade. Be patient. We don't have to catch every trade. We don't want to chase every trade. We want to wait for those patterns to occur and wait for that good quality signal. Because if we do that, we will trade less and we'll make more. And you know, guys, it wasn't until I figured that out that I start to grow an account and grow it consistently. And isn't that what our job is? Our job is not to be right. Our job is not to be the hero. Our job is not to hit home runs every trade. Our job is to make consistent money, to consistently move our account forward. And we do that by being pickier. We do that by being disciplined. We do that by running our trading business as a business. It doesn't have anything to do with emotion or rushing or chasing. It has everything to do with being patient and waiting for a trade. Do you guys know how many trades I made today when the stock was the market would just took off in the morning and just ripped higher? Anybody know how many trades I took today? Yeah, zero. I managed my winners. I didn't chase any trades that had already popped and run. I was already late for most of those. Now one that happened here toward the end of the day, Tiffany's, I could have taken, I didn't take. And I still might take that. We'll see how that acts tomorrow. Okay. I would I would be in Visa if not for the earnings tomorrow. But I can't take it because of the earnings being reported tomorrow. Okay. Uh no, uh, Robert. I I I think I've I think I've said that um, already. I enter the trade when the trade signal occurs. If I have done my market analysis, if I believe the market is strong, everything is looking good. When that trade signal occurs, I will enter that trade. Okay, I don't have to wait till the end of the day, and I don't have to wait for the follow through, because I'm buying the stock at or near price support, and I've calculated my risk in that trade, and it's acceptable. Okay, yes, I have GIS, and GIS is failing me today. And if that doesn't, if that moves any lower tomorrow, I'm out of the trade. In fact, my stop loss is like right there. This one failed. If it moves on lower from here, it failed. Very small risk in the trade. Move on, right? I don't care. It happens, right? It's part of trading. Okay. So let's think about how we manage these trades, how we look at these price patterns. Let's think about whether or not we can do a little bit better job in our evaluation of that price action. Let's talk ourselves through these trades a little bit more and do a little bit less of reacting emotionally. Okay, and we can do a better job on our trading. It really isn't as hard 
as we sometimes make it out to be. As long as we can sit back and be patient and wait for the trade, I know that trends will continue to be produced. I know that trades will continue to be produced every single day. I just simply have to wait for my trade. Be patient for the trade. It's one of the reasons I have a very high win-loss ratio. Because I'm very picky about the trades I take. Do I have losses? Yep, have losses just like everybody else. This one might turn into that. I don't worry about those, I just look for the next trade. My trade was planned, I have very little risk in this trade. Can you guys see this? Entering this position right in here, I can't remember where we got into this. Entering this position right in here, um, a very low little risk in this trade. Um, Robert, I use a rule. No more than 3% of my account goes into any one trade. Now, if I'm very, very confident in the market, I will cheat that up closer to 4%. Okay? But only 3 to 4% of my account goes into any one trade. I keep my trades relatively small of my overall account. And then um, just continue to trade. I mean, just keep trading. All right. Um, same with stocks, Dennis, and options. Same with stocks and options. But here's the difference. I take my overall account and I divide it up. I have 80% over here and 20% over here, okay? This 20% is what I use for the higher risk trade, like trades like option trading, those kind of things. I keep that over here. This money, I call this stay rich money, this is get rich money, okay? and. Here is where I'm, I'm holding stock positions, some longer term trades, some ETFs, things like that, that I find good patterns in the bigger part of my account. And I use this account. That prevents me from over trading, okay, options. Now, if you have a small account, you know, if you're trading $10,000, this is not possible, right? And, and you're likely going to trade a little bit more than three or 4%. Okay, but you still want to keep those trades small. You don't have to trade great big trades to be successful. Take a look at Coca-Cola. Okay. Right way options made money in Coca-Cola right here. What did we make? 25, 30% on that trade? The options on right way options two and a half bucks. If you have a small account, you've got to be picky. You've got to work at it a little bit more, but there are trades out there. You don't have to take excessive risk trades. Okay. Remember, these rules that I talk about, a lot of people with small accounts will say, well, okay, those apply to you. You've got this big account. Guys, I started my trading with 2,500 bucks. That's where I started. It took me years to build that account. Okay? I was in my 20s when I started. I'm 57 today. 
okay? You do not build an account overnight. It's slow and steady growth. Just keep working at it. Consistency is more important than anything else. If you can win 60, 65, 70% of your trades, even though they're small wins, you're going to grow your account. Good friend of mine by the name of Mike Peterson, I don't know if he's here tonight, lives, lives here in my little town. He spent a year practicing, never traded before, spent a year practicing his trading. I was working with him directly. Okay, A year practicing how to manage everything, understanding the platforms, going through you know lots of trades building his confidence okay he started with an account of twenty thousand dollars now he did get lucky because his first year was in 2017 okay but mike peterson made a 65 percent return his first year 65 percent return in his account. And here's the thing that'll blow you away. The biggest winning trade he had the entire year was about $375 in profit. He traded trades that were somewhere between six and $800 capital. He followed the rules. He stayed in that small trade and he banged out winners. His biggest, his average trade win, 120, 130 bucks. But he repeated it over and over and over with a very high win-loss ratio because he was very picky about the trades he took. And he grew his account. Take a look at Rick Sadler. The guy up there in the top corner that runs hit and run candlesticks. Rick started trading an option account. This is his second year in trading options. Okay, his, ver his second year, he had never traded an option until then. I worked with him a little bit. I talked with him about, and he would call me and ask me questions and things like that. And I would, and we went over options. He started an account with $5,100. He's not added to that account. He's not in, done anything with that account. And that account is now over $30,000. Now, he didn't do that by banging out giant trades and risking everything he had in a trade. He traded small positions and he just kept building on it. He just kept growing it. Now he's trading bigger size but it's still around that same percentage of his account when he trades. Consistency is more important. Consistency is more important. Hey, um, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Is there anyone here that has never uh, been to my YouTube channel, not subscribed to my YouTube channel? I wanna ask you guys a favor. Just a second, I actually have to bring it up. I don't even have my YouTube channel up. How dare I? <laughs> if you're not a subscriber, could you please do me a favor, go over there and click on that subscribe button on YouTube. There's tons of free training in there. And every morning I put out the morning market prep video. It's a preparation video prior to the market open. Okay, all of it's free, guys. Go over there and subscribe. There's tons of free information there, lots of education. Okay, stay up with what's going on. Watch these videos. You can learn an awful lot about trading over there. The whole purpose of my Right Way Options channel on YouTube is just to is is just traders helping traders, helping traders do a better job with their trading. 
That's right there above. Right there above. Right there by, by my name. Just click on that and click the subscribe button. Make sure you click, click the bell icon when you do that. Okay, click that bell icon so that you're notified when I upload a video. Every single morning before the market opens, there's a video added, okay? So take advantage of that if you're interested. I wanna thank everybody for being here tonight. I know we went kinda of long, but I wanted to really slow it down and take some time going into some of the detail of the price patterns and why these things matter. Okay, why we want to take the time to study that price action, how we can improve our trading if we do. All right. Thanks, everyone. I want to wish you all a fantastic day, a fantastic evening, I should say. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with the morning market prep video. Everyone take care of yourselves. Thank you so much for being here. Rick and I truly, truly appreciate it. We'll see you all tomorrow morning. Thanks guys. Have a great evening.